Hi my friend, we are here with another spicy opening in an Italian game. This time we are going to discuss about fried liver attack in series of videos. This is the first one, the spiciest version. Fried liver starts initially like normal Italian, then after two nights defense, we go knight g4. Notice that instead of knight f6, black could have also played for example bishop c5, but then if you remember our scotch can be serious we could play d4 and another fun another game starts different type of game starts there anyways let's go to our fried liver fried liver starts with knight g5 knight g5 attacking the f7 spot and black should defend the f7 spot otherwise it's a dead uh, game there are several continuation here. One is counterattack with bishop uh, c5, which is not good, but we will cover it shortly later. Another main line is to just play mm, d5 and we take. Here, there are two possible continuations either knight takes or the main line is knight a5. Knight a5, we play bishop b5 and then after defense from here the theory of the game starts basically all these moves are force from here is where the theory starts and we will cover this in the upcoming videos because it is deep but let's go for the fences line today at the start knight takes and we take on f7 takes queen f3 and here king should go to e6 anywhere else is bad for example king g8 leads to fancy mate with the bishop so black plays the best move and we attack the knight further should be defended all moves are forced so far right here is only one move that we should decide about i would suggest just simply castle but anyway the continuation is very similar you could also play it king d1 doesn't matter so castle and black should defend the knight for example but i cannot go after c2 pawn because then after that we just simply grab the knight if they grab our rook uh, then it's the end of the day it's a mate so black cannot uh, simply go for material and right now should consolidate and what we do we open up the center again black cannot capture this pawn it is poison for example if they capture it this is a we can even exchange all the pieces because we can develop every piece with turret and this pawn should be captured otherwise we capture the d5 pawn and d5 pawn itself is a pin pawn so and um, should be defended with the bishop but then we um, win that bishop and we are up um, the, um, positionally heavily we are up also you may say that why not sliding away with the king then we have some fun for example mate like that so when there are several pieces attacking it's not easy to just move the king away so now let's go back and uh, uh, after at this position when the bishop comes in front and blocks we win that bishop and we are up positionally hugely and we are up and uh, the king is almost mated and yeah it's not good so what was the problem for black black took the pawn and opened the file for white and this is the, what they shouldn't do when they are done development of course black doesn't mm, open the file but there are not many good moves there are two good moves for black queen f6 and king d7 let's go to queen f6 this is the main line basically we don't want to exchange queens because we are down a piece we should get something back then maybe we exchange so uh, what's the plan let me tell you what's the plan from here the point is that you will be down a piece, you will be down a knight, but you know, we will win uh, pawns. We will have 
two pawns, extra pawns at the end, and for a knight. And of course, for an exposed king as well. From here, if black played all moves up to no good, then from here you should not try to kill the black tactically immediately. There are lots of tactics running, but don't throw all pieces and uh, sacrifice everything to win. No. The plan is if either black blunders at some tactical point or if they don't blunder, we go to an end game in which we have an advanced pass pawn and two pawns and two extra pawns and white has one knight to defend against these two dangerous pawns. And it's very difficult for, no, sorry, black has one uh, knight to defend against these two dangerous pawns. And it's very difficult for black to defend it. Now, if you check, for example, with the engine, it says plus one. But if uh, you look at it from human point of view, it is more than that. Okay. Okay. Let's go now here. The only good move for black is king e7. Any other move is bad, uh, just for illustration, let me uh, tell you. For example, if they play some nonsense move, bishop d7, then this is easily end of the game. Now uh, we have a3 move, kicking the knight away. After kicking the knight, we try to open the center <laughs> further. If there is to keep the center closed, we kick the king and then we win a queen tactically like this. Okay, now you may say that they don't need to give up a queen. They just don't grab the bishop back. But if they don't take it back, then we will win another pawn as well. And we are not down a piece. It's just, just too good to, to be a position in a normal game. So... At this position, the only good move for black is king e7. The reason is to get rid of the pin. So after that, we uh, attack the queen, we uh, activate our knight. Notice that here you don't push. Uh, this a3 move is very good. It's the idea that we have. But the problem here is that the knight is not pinned and captures our knight. So first move first, we should move this knight with attack. Then we push the a3 pawn. And black goes to g6. g6 is the best score for black. For example, if black goes to uh, e6, I don't go to the whole line. Then I just explain you the issue. The issue is that you can play any move, basically. The issue is that white can develop easily, for example. Uh, and you don't go like that. First, you kick this knight. Uh, white can develop easily and this queen is pinned uh, the knight is pinned to the queen actually you don't the black don't want to run to another pin and uh, white tries to open the game and let me just discuss here as up here uh, the position is uh, black, um, black, um, white wins the next pawn and then the position is that white is up pawn and uh, wins extra pawn later. The A pawns uh, wins the A pawns and C pawn later because they are very weak. They don't have a good, don't, they don't make a good chain. And um, on the other hand, white is also down a piece, but it's not a matter here because uh, all black pieces are in back rank. So, Black only black's only good move is um, g6. Why g6 is good? Because black can create a counterplay. At some point, black can play, for example, bishop h3. Can develop the bishop is not in the way of uh, the queen is not in the way of bishop. Also, is not pinning uh, the knight. So this is really really best by far best move for black, and. First, uh, this idea of a3 is important, just kicking away that knight. You could, at this moment, you could capture that knight, but you could also win that pawn easily. And we are up two pawns right now, and almost we are in the structure that I was discussing. We are up two pawns, and what's the plan here? plan is that maybe later 
uh, relocate the bishop relocate the bishop attacking the queen opening the uh, f file pushing the pawns and this is very dangerous this pawn directly goes forward nobody can stop that pawn it has lots of defender in the way so, uh, even here even though it is attacked by multiple pieces but it has very good defenders so that's the plan if uh, black plays queen f6 Another direction black could have gone was uh, king d7. Again, for king d7, we can play a3, captures, capture, and after goes back, we grab, grab. And here we should be careful. So, uh, recall that let's see what happened. We play our a3 move, okay? Um, black loves to exchange everything because it's up a piece and enjoys being up a piece so here we take takes and don't grab that pawn easily if you take this pawn with the queen offers queen exchange before we do anything uh, we can also win that pawn is okay but black also has a option to block and later win over uh, our people but uh, just look at this position Position sounds good for white, right? White is up two pawns, but uh, it's not, the structure of black pawns is not bad, okay? And our pawn structure is not so good. On the other hand, black has a bishop pair, and we don't want to uh, them to have uh, such advantage like good pawn structure, reasonable pawn structure, and bishop pair. So. After grabbing the knight, then first activate your rook. And now it's very dangerous. Keep danger coming. Okay. And black has to move the queen. Otherwise, for example, if doing something nonsense, then this is a queen. Of course, okay, you can say that it can defend it with a bishop. But it can defend it with a bishop like this. But this is gonna So, no, uh, okay. Black should move the queen away. Only then capture that pawn. And here, um, we win the last pawn as well. Done by attack. No, the basically here uh, uh, actually we win um, the whole game because this uh, the seven move king d seven move is not very good. I just want to show you how tactically um, broken is this line. For example, this is just one continuation. There could be many continuations. Uh, the idea is that this um, we don't hurry to capture the pawn, the e pawn and d pawn, and when we capture, we capture with threat. Here, there are lots of threats running. If you push the pawn, it's a check, and uh, it's a deadly threat for white, and well, the game cannot last too long. In this position so this was the king d7 that no they usually don't play king d7 usually in, in fred level attack even in amateur level in when in lower levels they simply play sorry uh at this position they simply play queen f6 it's a very natural move and nobody goes for king d7 very passive move so I hope you enjoy essay tune and we will go into depths of original Tori actually later. Bye.